No, getting the COVID vaccine will not give you COVID-19. What you're getting is a little part of the protein spike of the virus in you. At that point, it's not an active or an inactive part of the virus whatsoever. Once you get that small part of the protein, it's actually giving you the immunity in your cells to fight COVID-19. So when you come in contact with someone who's sick with COVID-19, you will be able to fight off that virus. Uh, so for the COVID virus, the um, mRNA is a snippet of genetic code that codes for that spike protein that's on the coronavirus. We've probably all now seen the schematic of this coronavirus, which is a sphere with these spikes on the outer surface. Um, so um, that mRNA, mRNA will um, uh, code for that protein. So when it's injected into somebody, it will go to that person's cells. It will go to the ribosome part of the cell, which is the protein factory for the cells. And those ribosomes will make the spike protein. The spike protein will then go out to the rest of the body when it does that, the immune cells uh, that are in the body will see that foreign invader and they'll start making antibodies to it. And they'll be primed to make more antibodies if they see that uh, at some point in the future. So let's say a month later after somebody gets vaccinated, if they get exposed to the coronavirus, the antibodies are gonna be there, particularly at the entry points in the mouth and nose areas where there's a high concentration of antibodies and it may even prevent the coronavirus from entering the body and it will take care of the infection uh, that way. So that's how the mRNA vaccine works. So I think it depends on one's perspective, but with the technology that's available now, it, to me it's not particularly surprising that uh, we'd be able to get a vaccine so quickly. Um, so just to recount the events, it, uh, there was the uh, epidemic that started in Wuhan China uh, in late fall, early winter time. Uh, they fairly quickly were able to isolate that it was a virus, uh, a coronavirus, and remarkably, uh, in very short order, they were able to get the genetic code for it. Although that technology, as remarkable as, as it is, is not new. It's been around for a decade or more. So by early January, they already had the genetic code. So uh, the CEO of BioNTech, which is a um, German biotechnology company, um, very early on recognized that, um, that it may become a big problem, the, the COVID. And they were working with Pfizer, an American pharmaceutical company, on an mRNA vaccine for influenza, which I think is in fairly late stages. I think it's almost ready for trial. Uh, but he quickly realized that they could switch uh, production from that towards coronavirus. Uh, as I understand it from reading reports, within 24 hours of uh, talking to the CEO of Pfizer, and they had already had a relationship working on the flu vaccine, the Pfizer um, CEO agreed to um, uh, provide the resources they need. I think what Pfizer provided was financial uh, support and, uh, and other infrastructure support, uh, and BioNTech did the technology work. So by um, summertime, early fall, they had a uh, candidate vaccine and it got trialed and the trial took about three months and uh, the results were great. And uh, it was emergency use authorized by the FDA in early December and here we are in January. I guess one other way to look at it, which my colleague Christy Birch likes to say, is that it's like building a cake, they, making a cake. They didn't have to make it from scratch, they made it from cake mix because they had everything prepared in terms of an mRNA vaccine for the flu virus. So uh, Moderna had been doing some mRNA work as well. I mentioned Pfizer because they were the leading and the first ones out. But uh, similar story, although uh, Moderna did it on their own with a lot of help from the federal, uh, with the US federal government providing financial resources and such. Well, I mean, it's remarkably safe. Uh, between Moderna and Pfizer, they vaccinated 40,000 plus people in trial. They had no deaths, no major side effects. At this point in time in the US, we've now vaccinated about 15 million people. and We've seen really no major problems uh, with it. Um, I mean, some people have allergic reactions and such, which is expected, 
um, but really no major concerning problems. And what's not safe is COVID itself. Uh, 400,000 Americans have died from COVID, so that's not safe. The vaccine is safe. Um, what the studies showed with Pfizer and Moderna is about 10 to 14 days into the first shot, you start getting some protection. It's at that point where people who get the placebo are starting to get sick and the people who have gotten the vaccine are not getting sick, and it takes about 10 to 14 days. Full immunity will take several weeks longer than that, but at least there's some protection starting 10 to 14 days in. At this time, we're really not quite sure at how long my immunity will last with COVID-19. What we do know is that the vaccines have been studied since the summer of 2020. And up to this time, we are seeing that there is some immunity present. Moving forward, time will tell. Um, as more of the population get the vaccine, we're gonna know how long that this immunity will last. Well, what the second shot does is provide probably better immunity, but also long-term immunity. Most vaccines nowadays are at least two shots because it's really that second shot that really sort of uh, uh, closes the deal, so to speak, and, and provides life, lifelong or very long immunity. Many countries are now checking for mutations on a regular basis and will be doing so going forward. And, um, and they can continue, Pfizer and Moderna and, and whatever vaccine uh, else might be out there in the future, can now monitor their um, vaccine and make sure that it's effective against it. One of the advantages of an mRNA vaccine versus a more traditional vaccine is that um, if it turns out that there's a mutation that the vaccine doesn't work as well against, they can fairly easily uh, do a different snippet of mRNA and ramp up production pretty quickly. Some of the side effects of the COVID-19 vaccine, um, one of them is at your injection site, you have pain and swelling at the injection site where you receive the vaccine. One of the other side effects could be a small low grade fever. You can have some chills and feel a little coldness the night after the vaccine. Also, you can kind of get a little fatigued and tired and just be like a little worn out after the end of the day. One other thing is just you may have a slight headache. Most of these reactions happen within the first 24 hours after receiving the vaccine. After your second dose of the vaccine, some of the original side effects that you have may be a little bit more intensified. And that's because your body is building an immune response. Uh, they're both excellent. The Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, uh, the, the two that are available in this country at this time, are excellent. Yes, after you receive the COVID-19 vaccine, we still need to mask and social distance. Even though we've received the vaccine, we are still unsure if we're going to be spreading COVID-19 to others. So we really need to make sure that we're um, staying with the guidelines, social distancing and masking are still extremely important. If you've had any allergic reaction to any vaccine in the past, it may not be a good idea to get the COVID-19 vaccine. However, you really need to discuss this with a healthcare professional or your doctor. Um, I also get the question of if I have an allergy to seafood or peanuts, can I get the vaccine? Absolutely, it is not contraindicated if you have one of those allergies. If I have um, an allergy to bees or wasps or bee stings, um, you can absolutely get the COVID-19 vaccine. I also get asked if I have some type of autoimmune disease, is it safe to get the COVID-19 vaccine? Just remember, if you have any type of autoimmune disease, your immune system is already depressed. So being, having a low immune system, it's really critically important that you get the COVID-19 vaccine to fight the disease. 
If you have an underlying condition, it is extremely important to have a discussion with your healthcare provider about if you should receive the, vac the COVID-19 vaccine. After that discussion, your healthcare provider will determine if it is appropriate for you. The CDC recommends that if you've already had COVID-19, that you need to go ahead and move forward and get the, co the COVID-19 vaccine. What's, what's the major reason and why? Once you have COVID-19, you will have immunity for about 90 days. And that's what's called natural immunity. So you can get it before that 90 days or you can wait until that 90 days. But once you get the vaccine, you will then ensure that you have long lasting immunity to COVID-19. There are some factors with receiving the vaccine before the 90 days and it will be based on the treatments that you had when you had COVID-19, and you will just need to discuss this with your doctor before you get the vaccine. I got my first shot three weeks ago, and I'm getting my second shot tomorrow. I'm looking forward to it. My arm ached uh, the next day, and maybe a little bit of fatigue, um, and by the second day afterwards, 48 hours afterwards, I was perfectly back to normal. Once the vaccine was available to me, it was my turn in line, so I felt that I needed to get it. Uh, I had the first dose in the, at the end of December, and after the first dose, I had a little pain and injection at the site, but nothing else. I felt absolutely fine. So for the next three weeks, I went along, and well, actually, the vaccine, my vaccine dose, dose was due at four weeks. I actually got the Moderna vaccine, and I actually just had my last dose, my second dose, on January 18th. After I got the second dose, I had a little pain and swelling at the site, a little redness. I felt absolutely fine the night of the injection. The next day, I was just a little tired and fatigued, nothing else. So that's 24 hours after my second dose. And by day three, after the dose, I was absolutely fine. And, and right now, this is day four, and I feel great.